Hello everyone, it's Chris, and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we have on the channel today? Today, Mr. Chris, down south, sent in a couple things for me to check out. First is a Piccolo. It's a RTG graphics card, Zorro 2, Zorro 3, made in Germany by, uh, I'm not even saying that first name, Helfrich is the last name, but there is the creator's name right there. Anyway, we're going to check that out in a bit. Also along for the ride is another Amiga 1200 in for a recrap and removal of this rusty RF modulator. It's very clean on the bottom. This is, of course, a 1B. This is an earlier model, not your 1D. I own a 1B. Works very well. Has the normal Commodore fixes. All looks well. Caps are a little crusty and we have a new self-supplied kit from AmigaStore.eu that we will be using the owner provided for that. Get the soldering station down here and then we'll go over a preliminary fire up just to make sure this thing is functional. Know what I'm getting into just in case any repairs need to be first. So new power supply, fire up the inverter. No power, no sun. There we go. Alright, now let's see what we get. Turn it on. No floppy drive, so we're going to have a boot delay. Devoom TV pops on, so I'm getting a video signal to the monitor at least. We should see nothing for about 20 to 30 seconds. These are 3.0 ROMs, so they're going to take a few minutes. There we go. And you can see here, it looks kind of dim, right? Very dim, actually. So we're going to compare that after the recap. So you can see here, as we zoom in close, see these lines? Well, a lot of times, that isn't anything bad. What happens is, this is an NTSC monitor. And I'm going to bet, if I look at this crystal, she's a PAL unit. Exactly. 28.37516 megahertz, And that's why we have a weird display on here. Well, that's NTSC-ish on a PAL Amiga through software. It is still the wrong frequency on my end. Now, that doesn't mean it's not working. It's working really well, but we're going to see if we can clean these lines up a little bit. See that crap? Now, it looks clear, right? It looks great from here. So, I'm going to get the recap started. Cut all these off Lorena style. You know how it works. If you haven't seen my Lorena Bobbit method of removing capacitors, it involves clipping the cap off with a pair of snips, a.k.a. Lorena Bobbit, picking off the aluminum base and plastic rubber gasket, then again snipping the two nubs that are left over from the legs, removing the final piece of plastic, cleaning, debraiding, and uh, fluxing, you know, washing it down after you debraid the final legs that are sticking up. If you haven't checked that out before, check out many of my previous videos where I show that entire process itself. RF modulator's out. Now for the RF modulator, I use the old school solder sucker because she's got a big old snout. And it just pulls a lot more volume in, especially for something that large. And then uh, we'll clean up the holes with some braid. Our holes on the modulator side here are clean, and that can be used for an HDMI port or a VGA port for your Scan Plus or whatever you got. They also draw a lot of current, too, so kind of puts a little strain on your old power supply. We don't use them anymore with such modern solutions, such as the simple DB23 to VGA or another external solution or an AJ Scan Plus, etc. Okay. Caps are cut out. Um, we actually have some moisture underneath the video and audio circuit. Now these are just with the legs removed. You can see a little bit of moisture around some spots in the center of the caps. Maybe. So I'm going to uh, flux and debraid what is left of those legs. And then we'll come back for another inspection. Okay. It's been like 10 or 15 minutes, and as you can see, all of the legs came out clean. And CN460 here, third one ever. We don't ever put a cap on there. So I'm still working my way through. I only have done the video and audio section so far, and the one on the PCM. CIA, I took all the through holes out, and we'll replace all those. And she was actually a little crusty underneath. This is like my 12th Q-tip. I ripped through those. So there's a total of 18 caps we got to clean up and get back to it. All right, just like that, all the caps are off. So the cap kit here from AmigaStore.eu comes with uh, 
all the caps for a 1200 reference 1399 according to them I read a marker on them 100 and then 47 22 10 you get the two one thousands right here they're Nichicons but these guys are N H G and they got pre weirdo legs so keep an eye on your negative bar there to know which way you're going Just like that 18 new red dots I had a heck of a time with this one back here I kinda bumped into that a little bit so gotta kinda get that scuzz mark out even with a fine tip only stabbed myself one time reaching for the poker everything came out very clean now let's hook it up just like that boom there we go now she's still a Palomiga on an NTSC display so I get rasterization lines like you wouldn't believe so there's NTSC boot she's a wider screen on an NTSC monitor anyway I don't have the vertical lines across it because we're using an HDMI SCART connector it's not the best let's hit the PAL NTSC button and see if it straightens up a little bit no PAL or PAL we can't even shoot this to NTSC it's just like no this box produces some weird snow on the screen it's just this box because it doesn't do it with the regular video I think this box is screwed up yeah my uh, SCAR cables about had it let me hold it with my hand I think that's the problem there we go if I don't bump it it's nice and clear the Amiga's working, yay! Let's test a game. I suck. Playing just fine. I'm dead. Holy crap. Yay! I beat one. Okay, so she's working. Everything's groovy. Video is a little bit janky on my display because she's a PAL unit. But everything is cool. And another Amiga has been repaired, recapped, and can live on again. So this is another Amiga 1200 from the old Eurozone. And she's looking good. We're going to get this shipped back to the owner pronto. Thank you guys for coming along on this super fast Amiga repair. Stay tuned for more updates in the future. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something.